Okay, this video, in this video we're going to discuss solving absolute value inequalities, okay? Uh, in the last video we looked at absolute value equations, in the video before we looked at solving linear inequalities, so now in this vid video we're going to kind of put the, those two skill sets together and we're going to solve some absolute value inequalities, okay? Now, to start with, uh, let's look at this example here. The absolute value of x is less than 4, okay? And I just want to look at the number line and see what exactly am I talking about here? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so here's four. One, two, three, four. Here's negative four. Uh, so the absolute value of zero is zero. That's less than four, so that's going to be included in there. The absolute value of 1 is 1, that's less than 4, so that's going to be included in there. Uh, 2 is also in there, 3 is also in there, 4 is not. Because the absolute value is 4, and 4 is not less than itself. 5 is also not in there, so it's going to be basically everything to the left of 4 here. Except when we get down here... The absolute value of negative 3 is 3, which is less than 4. That's good. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4, which is not less than 4, so that's not good. So we have to stop before we get to 4. And as you can imagine, we get right up next to 4, to negative 4, and we have to stop. So the absolute value of x is less than 4 implies that x has to be between negative 4 and 4. Okay? And the way we write that in interval notation is, of course, uh, x is in the set from negative 4 to 4. The way that we would write it using normal inequality notation uh, would actually be like this. Uh, negative 4 and 4, and x is in between there. Okay? You can write it like this, or I do not recommend this, this last way, but I'll give it to you as an option. Or you can say x is less than 4 and x is greater than negative 4. Okay? Again, you can do it this way. I really think it's uh, uh, more straightforward to write it this way because this really solidifies in your mind x has got to be between these two numbers. And please, when you're writing it this way, please put the smaller number on the left and the larger number on the right, just like we have in the number line. Uh, if you put a big number on the left and a small number on the right, it, it, it just gets confusing. So, just for our own sanity's sake, let's keep the smaller numbers on the left and the bigger numbers on the right. Okay? So this is example one. Example two. Absolute value of x is greater than or equal to seven. Alright, well, let's see what this number line is going to look like. Uh, here's zero. Let's just put seven here. Let's put a negative seven there. Okay? Well, zero is not going to be in there, because the absolute value of zero is zero, and that is not greater than or equal to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, same problem. The absolute value of those are one, two, three, four, five, and six, which are not greater than or equal to seven. So really the smallest number is going to be seven, and then anything bigger than seven, right? Yeah. Except we've also got stuff on the other side of the zero, on the negative side, because if I take the absolute value of negative seven, that's greater than or equal to 7, in particular equal to. If I take the absolute value of negative 8, I get 8, which is greater than 7, so that would be in our solution set. So we can see that not only do I have 7 and everything to the right, I also have negative 7 and everything over to the left. Now notice, when your absolute value is less than, you fill in between the dots. When the absolute value is greater than, you fill in the outside of the dots, okay? So the way we would write this uh, using uh, uh, our inequalities, we would say x is less than or equal to negative 7 or x is greater than or equal to 7. Now, you may be thinking to yourself right now, hey, hold it. Earlier he said and, now he's saying or. What gives? I'll tell you what gives. Over here when I said and, that's because in order for x to be in this set, it has to be both less than 4 and greater than negative 4. Okay? It has to be in between those two, so it has to meet both of those criteria. Over here, 
X cannot be bigger than 7 and less than negative 7 simultaneously. No, it simply cannot do that. That's like saying I'm going to be both short and tall simultaneously. Not going to happen, okay? You're either one or the other, which is why we use the word or. So X can either be found in this set or it can be found in this set, okay? And the way you write that in interval notation is actually something a little new. Uh, we would say X is in, now where's our far left? Our far left is negative infinity, right? So we go from negative infinity all the way up to negative 7, and we stop. And then we start up again, and we say going from 7 all the way up to positive infinity. And I'm saying X can either be in this set, or it can be in this set. And the symbol for or in our interval no notation is this thing that looks kind of like a U. Okay? There's a reason for that. The U actually stands for the union of those two sets. Okay? But it just, think of it as meaning or. It means it can be in this set or in this set. All right? Okay. Well, now let's look at a, let's look at a problem or two. Okay, let's say we've got the problem x, the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than or equal to 6. Now, if this were uh, an equation, we would know what to do right now. We'd say, oh, this means whatever's inside of here can be either negative 6 or 6, and I'd split it into two different equations, and I would solve each of those equations. Okay, that's all fine and good. Uh, with this particular inequality, though, if you remember, we said when the absolute value of something is less than a number, what that means is whatever's inside of here has to be between negative 6 and 6. So I'm going to say i got negative 6 over here, I've got 6 over here, and x minus 2 is somewhere in the middle, and it's going to include both of the endpoints. Okay? So I want you to go from writing it this way to writing it this way, and that way you lose the absolute value. Now, what's weird about this, though, is that we no longer have two sides of our inequality. We actually have three sides. We have the left side, the inside, and the right side. So now when I look at this and I say to solve for x, I'm going to add two. I'm going to add two here, and here, and here. Uh-huh. Add them up. Negative six plus two is negative four. Six plus two is eight. Keep my inequalities, and I'm going to add two there and I get x is between negative four and eight. On my number line, this translates perfectly, negative four, eight, I'm including both of the endpoints, and x is going to be in between there. And in my interval notation, I say x can be found somewhere between negative four and eight. Notice, square brackets on either side because I'm including both endpoints. Okay? What's that? You want another one? Sure. Let's do another problem. Uh, 2x minus 5. I'm going to take the absolute value of that, and that's going to end up being greater than 3. Okay? Now, this time the absolute value is greater than. Remember what that means? It means that either it's going to be on this side, or it's going to be on this side. That means either... 2x minus 5 is less than negative 3, or 2x minus 5 is greater than 3. Let's look at this just for a second. Okay? What did we do here? We said that whatever's inside of here, if the absolute value is greater than 3, that means on my number line it would have to be either less than negative 3 or greater than 3. So that's why I said whatever's inside of here, this thing, is less than negative 3, or greater than 3. Okay? And I want you to be really, really careful about the direction of your inequalities. And one thing that you might remember is, remember when we, when we would multiply this times a negative, it would uh, change the direction of the inequality? Well, look, that got multiplied by negative 1, and sure enough, the inequality did change directions. So that's a way to kind of check your work and make sure that it's working out all right. Okay? Well, now we just have two linear inequalities. We can solve this thing. No problem! Uh, plus 5, plus 5, I get 2x less than 2, that means x is less than 1. Great. Or, over here, plus 5, plus 5, I get 2x greater than 8, x is greater than 4. 
Great. That's my answer. X is going to be less than 1 or greater than 4. So on my number line, I'll put a 1 and a 4 here. X is less than 1, meaning it's on the left of 1, or it's greater than 4, meaning it's on the right of 4. Notice I am not shading in either of those two points because I'm not including them with an or equal to there. And the way we write this in interval notation is to say X is somewhere between negative infinity or 1, or if it's not there, it's somewhere between 4 and positive infinity. Alright? As far as the three ways of writing your answer, I know that's kind of a pain. Uh, I, it does seem a little unreasonable of, uh, of uh, us math teachers to say, you need to write this three different ways. The only, way I'm the only reason I'm stressing the three different ways is that different people like to write it different ways and you're going to be communicating with lots of different people in your life and you need, you need to be able to speak the different languages. Okay? Alright, let's do one more. Okay, and let's make this a messy one. Okay? Let's do negative 3 times the absolute value of 2x plus 9 uh, plus 22 is greater than 4. Okay? Uh, Alright, so uh, um, First thing we're going to do, think about our order of operations. What's happening to x? Multiply times 2, then adding 9, then taking the absolute value, then multiply times negative 3, then adding 22. So we're going to get rid of that last step first. Minus 22, minus 22. And uh, I get negative 3 times the absolute value of 2x plus 9, greater than 4 minus 22 is negative 18. Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3 and a little alarm should go off in your head, and you should say, oh my god, we're dividing by negative 3, that means we have to change the direction of our inequality. And you're right, you do. So, this is going to be absolute value of 2x plus 9 is less than, negative 18 divided by negative 3 is 6. If the absolute value of something is less than 6, that means it has to be between negative 6 and 6. So, negative 6 less than 2x plus 9, less than 6. And uh, so now I have three sides of my equation here. And so I'm going to get rid of my 9 by saying minus 9, minus 9, minus 9, all three sides. And negative 6 minus 9 is negative 15, less than 2x, the 9s take care of themselves, less than negative 3. And uh, now I just divide everything by 2, and I get... Negative 15 divided by 2 is negative 7.5, less than x. Negative 3 divided by 2 is negative 1.5. And there's our answer. And on the number line, negative 7.5, negative 1.5. I'm going to not fill those in because I don't have an or equal to there. I go in between them, and I say x is somewhere between negative 7.5 and negative 1.5. Parentheses on either side to indicate that we're not including the endpoints. All right.